Okay, so we'll get started here. So the question says, um, storms in the South Pacific can create waves that travel all the way to the California coast, this distance away. How long does it take them to travel this distance if they travel at this speed? Um, that sounds fairly simple. So they've given us, uh, they've given us a distance of, uh, let me just convert all the numbers to basic SI unit so that I can just plug in the numbers in basic SI unit. So 12,050 kilometers, which means 10 to the power of three meters. And its speed is 13 meters per second. If you're thinking, hmm, for the duration of time, can I just make the units come out right? Um, so just staring at it for a bit, it would be delta x over v. Uh, you could have also said uh, speed, it's defined as distance per time, and then you can solve for time. You can do either of the way. <laughs> um, as long as your final units come out, the, 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 this is simple enough for a situation that your answer will be right. So, so yeah, that's it. Um, I guess the main thing you have to do is I will get an answer in seconds when I do that, and I'll have to answer in days. So we'll do that conversion manually. So we have um, delta x, 12,050 times 10 to the 3 uh, meters and divided by speed, 13 meters per second. Let me make sure it'll do decimal approximation. Okay, so I have uh, my time of, uh, let me do 9.269 times 10 to the one, two, three, four, five, five seconds. And we don't want it in seconds, we want it in days. So we have to do unit conversion. And I know I did this at the beginning of the semester, but let me just do a quick recap. Um, so you do it by multiplying by one. You come up with the factors that'll conveniently cancel out this unit that you don't want and introduce the units that you do want. Um, so I'm getting to the day, and I don't know the second to day uh, conversion. I don't have it memorized in one step, so you, let me do it step by step. I do have uh, how many seconds are in one hour memorized. In one hour, I have 3,600 seconds. Okay, I need to convert hours to uh, days. Uh, so um, I'm multiplying by, so seconds have been canceled. I want hours to be canceled out. So I want hours in the denominator, day on top. So one day has 24 hours. Okay, yeah, that'll have converted my unit to day and that's what I want. Uh, yeah, so I take the number that I had. Uh, I'm pretty sure this will work, but I want to see if uh, original um, Sage method syntax also works, underscore for previously output. It might, it might not, we'll see. Uh, uh, 3600 times 24. That's what I'm dividing by. Oh, cool, it works. I think it works. Yeah, so 10.7 days. Very simple. Let me get to the next question. It says ultrasound equipment used in the medical profession uses sound waves of a frequency above the range of human hearing, 20 hertz to, to 20 kilohertz on the outside range. Um, people my age, I think I can barely hear 13 kilohertz, maybe. Um, younger people can hear higher. Um, <laughs> if the frequency of the sound produced by the ultrasound machine is 25 kilohertz, what is the wavelength of the ultrasound in bone if the speed of the sound in bone is that? Oh, so this is getting at one um, relationship uh, between, uh, it's uh, the most useful relationship for you will see for periodic waves. Um, it's this, it says, it, it's a um, mathematic, it's a formula that will relate these three important quantities together, uh, wave speed, for which we usually use letter V, or sometimes a C. Um, wavelength, for which we use letter lambda, and uh, 
wave or, or just wave frequency or just the frequency uh, for which we almost always choose the letter F. In upper division, you might, you might see the Greek letter nu. Uh, I won't use that in this class because it's so confusing with the V. Uh, it, omega and W is already things people get mixed up. I don't want to tell with another letter if I don't have to. Um, so these are the three quantities that necessary to fully characterize any periodic wave. And these physical quantities have this unit. Speed comes in meters per second. Wavelength comes in meters. Frequency comes in hertz or in the basic SI unit, one over second. And, um, and there's a formula that relates these three quantities together. And you've, oh, I forget if I mentioned it in lecture. You might have seen in lecture how you can uh, use a dimensional analysis. You can just try combining this in a way that makes a sense in terms of units. And after thinking through it for a bit, the only way they will make a unit sense is this uh, combination. Wave speed is equal to wavelength or wave frequency times wavelength. It's the same thing if you swap it. This combination is the only one that makes a unit sense. And it turns out that's also the correct relationship. Um, it's not always the case that the answers that make unit sense is the correct one. You can always have like a, a, dimension, a dimensionless quantity, uh, like a numerical factor of one half or whatever. So, uh, but in this case, it's simple enough that if you make the units come out right, you'll get the correct relationship. And this is one of the most useful relationship because you will see it a lot. Um, a lot of the times we might even give you information about a setup, assuming that you can use this relationship to figure out other stuff. Like we might give you speed and wavelength, figuring that you can figure out either the frequency or period uh, relying on this relationship. So, okay, I need this solved in terms of um, wavelength to actually use it. My wavelength is equal to speed divided by frequency. And uh, so when I plug in the numbers, let me just convert everything to basic SI unit. So my speed is already in basic SI unit, 3000, divided by frequency. Okay, I need to do that in basic SI unit, 25 times 10 to the power of 3 hertz. And when I do the calculation, I get an answer in meters. I need to convert it to centimeters, multiply by 100, so 12 centimeters. Okay, okay last question. Um, it says, bats use sound waves to catch insects. Okay, <laughs> a bat can detect frequencies up to, oh, wow, that's pretty high, 114 kilohertz. Uh, and what that high frequency will let them do is uh, have a greater spatial resolution, uh, which is a physics force topic. <laughs> You'll see it in physics force. Uh, if the sound waves travel through air at a speed of that, what is the wavelength of the sound waves? Oh, so we are using the same relationship here. Again, uh, these three are really the uh, most uh, important quantities whenever you are dealing with the periodic waves, whether it's a periodic traveling waves like this setup or periodic uh, standing waves uh, that you will see. Uh, well, you have seen in assignment and you will see in lab this week. Um, so we are still using the same relationship. And I guess they are, since they're asking for wavelength, uh, oops, uh, since they're asking for wavelength, it's the same thing. Okay, so I'm just gonna plug in the numbers, taking care that I do it in basic SI unit and I answer in millimeters. So uh, my wave speed is 341 meters per second already in basic SI unit divided by 114 kilo, so times 10 to the power of three hertz. So I get that answer, uh, that's in meters, let me, just to multiply the, that by 10 to the power of 3 to get an answer in millimeters, okay, 2.99. I think it'll accept 3 as the correct answer. <laughs> so, so, yeah, um, that's the answer. And, uh, so, yeah, these are relatively simple questions, uh, both of these three questions that we've done and all the other questions that are in this group. 
um, it's uh, mostly uh, application of definition, uh, like a definition of frequency and other uh, things. Like you could uh, frame what we did here as uh, like a definition of speed. 